Hey, it's a common sight in central Kentucky. A huge tree standing alone out in the middle of a farm pasture. From its height and the length of its branches, we can tell that it's old. But here's something amazing. That tree and others like it may have seen the very first settlers arrive in Kentucky. The bluegrass has one of the largest populations of pre-settlement trees in the country. So identifying, protecting, and preserving these ancient trees is the mission of Venerable Trees. This is probably the largest population of ancient trees of any inhabited place in North America. Uh, when the first settlers arrived in the bluegrass in 1790, uh, they found an astonishing landscape that completely captivated people. The early descriptions of the first visitors here made this sound like the land of milk and honey. And it's because of a specific reason. They found open grown pastures and open woodlands of large old trees. And they were able to move into this land and farm without having to spend decades clearing the land. And the result of this in many farms throughout the bluegrass uh, these trees still exist. So we have very large numbers, probably 100,000 or more, of ancient trees that predate the settlement of Kentucky. We're the only 18th century city on this side of the mountains that's not on a, on a river, because back in those days you got around by flat boats and pierogies and things. But the farmers here were so taken with the land and so able to farm immediately without this immense labor of clearing forests that they settled here, and that's why Lexington is here. One of the things that's really remarkable is where you have a large mansion, like the Loudon House here, up on the top of a hill. These were, of course, very large farms in the mid-1800s, and the mansions were built in the best groves of trees. And the reason for that was for the shade and the breeze, but also to give the look of an instant formal English-style garden. And so in all cases, we've, we've assessed a large number of big old mansions or places where there were old mansions in Lexington. And in all cases, the trees are much older than the houses. The woodland pastures were almost certainly created by the activities of the American bison. Bison are really interesting animals. They feed in large herds. We probably had among the largest populations of bison here in the bluegrass of anywhere in the east. They are grazers. They only eat grass and cane. They don't eat trees. They will feed very intensely in an area. And then they'll leave to go in search of better forage or in search of water or in search of salt, which they always needed. And so they may be gone for several decades at a time. And that allowed these little trees to get established and come up. And by the time the bison return, the uh, trees were big enough to survive. We also know that drought played an important role. Prior to the settlement of Lexington, we had many, many decades of severe drought in the time that these trees got established. And that probably gave them an advantage. These trees are very deeply rooted down into the karst, the fractured limestone rock. I cannot tell the age of a tree by looking at it. Nobody can. I can say I think it's very likely that this tree was here before settlement. So I chose the term venerable to indicate these are trees that we prize and value and pay respect to without making a specific judgment about how old they are. Trees do make a record in their annual rings of their entire biography, if you will, but these trees are typically hollow and the labor involved in getting pieces of wood that you can age are immense. We've probably aged maybe a dozen or so trees in the Lexington area. And they all come out in the three to 500 year age range. We have a couple from Woodford County that are quite a bit older, uh, but a tree like this huge burr oak right here is certainly a pre-settlement tree. So I would put it in the range of 300 to 500 years. The purpose of Venerable Trees, the nonprofit, is to ensure a future for these trees. They're disappearing very rapidly. They're disappearing due to old age, due to development, soil compaction, mower damage. Our goal is to work with landowners to ensure a future for these trees, for these ancient trees, so that a tree like these will live as long as it possibly can, live out its natural life. We believe strongly in the magic of mulch. Properly mulching a tree, not those big volcanoes you see, but properly mulching a tree like this will keep the mower away from the tree, but more, more importantly, or as importantly, mulched soil gradually be becomes uncompacted as organic matter is pulled down by little soil critters 
uh, into the soil, then it becomes less compacted. So mulch is a wonderful thing. And that's true for all trees, not just for these ancient trees. This tree is an excellent example of what happens to these trees, and that is that lightning strikes are a very important cause of damage. But typically, as with this tree, the lightning does not kill the tree outright. People see trees like this all the time. And you'll notice this tree's the top is dead and it's got this lightning strike down the side. This uh, blue ash is one of my favorite trees. It's, it's probably 50 feet shorter than it used to be. And people see these trees and they think, oh, that tree's in decline. And I was talking to a farmer one day who had a big, beautiful blue ash tree and the top was dead. And he said, I, I don't think that that tree's gonna make it. I think I'm gonna have to take it down. And I said, yes, sir, I don't think that tree has more than 300 good years left. <laughs> If we're gonna live with old trees, and we already are living with lots of ancient trees in the city and in the bluegrass and in the National Basin, we need to become more tolerant of trees that look like this because these trees are likely to live for hundreds of years more. There's nothing wrong with these trees. Trees are built differently than we are. When, when they get a wound, they don't heal the wound, they, they wall it off chemically, and then they go on living quite happily. And this tree in particular is actually growing very fast. One of the things that we've discovered worldwide in recent years is that we always thought the trees slowed down their growth as they got older, kind of like we do, but in fact, trees grow faster as they get older. So the oldest trees are the fastest growing trees. And we miss it because they're, such a, they, they're so huge that we don't notice that addition. So these trees are very healthy and very vigorous. They're able to lose their entire crown and rebuild a new crown uh, without really any uh, harmed the tree. People often don't realize what a remarkable city this is and how few cities have any old trees at all. And, and we have them in every single neighborhood. If you find one of these trees, look around the neighborhood because very often I've observed that these trees that are left behind in the city are actually in clusters. So look around.